Well, this morning, I don't have much of a talk, actually, and that's not because I was, uh, not just because I was unwell this week and didn't have time, but um, I just got the sense, and you probably can tell by the time, that ordinarily I would have got up here sooner to do a talk. Um, you're pleased to know you won't be leaving late, but I have a brief talk, and I want to open it up time for ministry. Um, we've been talking a lot about the presence of the Lord and his power, and uh, I want us to experience his presence this morning. Um, what I do want to say before we um, see what the Lord's got planned for us is I want to just look at a uh, scripture, a portion of scripture that's at the very start of the Bible that for me uh, is going to underpin what I believe the Lord wants to do this morning. Uh, I don't know about you, but I love uh, a red letter Bible. Has anyone got a King James or New King James or any Bible that you've got the letters of Jesus in red? I love that. It's kind of like, pay attention. This is Jesus speaking. And I, and I love how uh, whenever God speaks, I always seem to sit up a little bit straighter in my chair, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> but I want to look at three words this morning. And it is three words that form a question. In fact, it's the first question God ever asked mankind. And I think we all know this, but when God asks a question, it's not that he doesn't know the answer. Yes, that makes sense. It's the question is the benefiting for us. And I want to look at this wonderful question this morning. And we can find the question in Genesis 3, 7 to 13. Why don't we turn together? It's going to be on the screen if you're in the room. And if you're online, it will be on your device as well. And let me just read this portion of Scripture. And we will see God's first question as, uh, in the Scriptures here. Then the eyes of both were opened. Let me just give you uh, a summary if, uh, if you're wondering what's just happened. Adam and Eve, of course, have, uh, in this beautiful garden called Eden, which means paradise. Eden means paradise. And uh, there was a particular tree, good, knowledge, uh, good and evil, knowledge of good and evil, that they were not to eat from. But uh, the serpent enticed them to with the promise of being like God. And uh, they took the apple, and so that's where we join this story. And as they, as they took the apple, the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden." But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, here we go, three words, question, where are you? Where are you? And Adam said, I, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I command you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit and, and I ate it. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. And we'll leave the story at this point. Where are you? You know, I have been meditating and thinking through this question all week. And I want to just dive into this very briefly before we have a time of ministry. But the first thing I want you to see about this question is this. God is the one, Father God, that takes the initiative. Think about it. God asked, where are you? He was calling out to Adam. God knew what had happened. This was not a surprise to God. And God didn't say, think, well, hold on a minute. They've just gone and eaten the apple. What's the point of me going out to walk in, in the court of the day? He didn't go, oh, my word, I, I washed my hands of these guys. He still went out in, to walk to see them. Isn't that amazing? He took the initiative and he said, where are you? You see, 
I'm reminded of Romans 5. And verse 8 says, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The God that we're talking about, the Father God that we're talking about, loves us so much that he still seeks us out in spite of the sin in our lives and the enmity that is between us. Where are you is an invitation, irrespective of where you are. Where are you is Father God seeking you out. He knows where you are. (laughs) He knows the very number of the hairs on your head, by the way, so one could figure that he knows where you are. But he says, where are you? And as I said before, the question was, not for the benefit of God, it was for the benefit of Adam. You see, isn't it interesting, Adam's response? How did Adam answer this? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. He didn't just say, I hid myself. He opened up to God about how he felt in that moment. Have you ever, as a, maybe some of you are parents or, uh, you, you know, you've... Um, You've had young children that you've said to when they're in a situation, you said, how are you feeling? Now, you know what the answer is. You can see it on their face, but you want to, want to ask them that question so they can share their heart and they can understand what's going on. And you see, when, when God says to us, where are you? He's not necessarily wanting your GPS coordinates. When he says, where are you? He's really asking you this question. Why are you hiding from me? Because the truth is, friends, we all hide from his presence sometimes. We've talked about the presence of God and we're excited about the presence of God. But here's the thing. Sometimes we hide from his presence. God seeks us out. He wants to walk with us in the cool of the day, and yet we hide ourselves for many, many reasons, which we're going to look at in a moment as we open up for ministry. And lastly, I want to look at this on verse 11. God says this, who told you you were naked? Another question. Why did God ask him that question? An opportunity for Adam to confess. Is that interesting? Where are you? I I hid, Lord, because I realized I was naked. I hid, I was afraid. Who told you you were naked? I I ate the apple. I'm sorry, I ate the apple. You see, God is not just wanting us to ask ourselves the question, why am I hiding from his presence? He wants to give us the opportunity to confess what's holding us back. Where are you? I'm hiding, Lord, because you must surely hate me for for all the things I've done. Who told you that? Well, the enemy did. Lord, forgive me for accepting the lies of the enemy. Do you see the invitation of God the Father? And lastly, as we read uh, in uh, verse 21, the Lord God made for Adam and his wife garments of skins and clothed them. What was that? It was a sacrifice, the first shedding of blood. It was a foreshadow, a type of of the sacrifice that was to come, the perfect lamb, Jesus, that was to shed his blood. And so he clothed them. He made a way for them. And so this morning, I'm going to invite the band up. As I said, it's not much of a talk. If you came here for a a three-point sermon, I hope you don't leave disappointed. But as I said, I just didn't feel like I needed to say much because those three words say it all. And the question for you this morning is, where are you? Where are you? Are you you busy, so busy that you can't spend time in God's presence? Are you more interested in the accolades of man? Are you more interested in the world's success than you are being in his presence? Maybe that's you this morning. Where are you? 
Are you hiding from God because of shame of the things that you've done? Where are you? Are you afraid of God? Because rather than seeing him as a loving heavenly father, you see him as a God with a big stick that just wants to hear you, hit you. Where are you this morning? Can we stand, church?